Welcome to section one. Again, thank you for signing up for this course. And I hope that once you're done with all of this, you're going to get a better understanding of who you are and where you want to go. And I think in life, we aimlessly hit cruise control and we just go through the motions of life. And we get to the point where we realize there's more and we're always chasing after this more, but we don't know what it is. So in section one, we want to talk about life planning and goal setting. And when you hear life plans, you might think about all kinds of different things. This could be your career, it could be your educational background, it could be retirement planning, and a lot of it is that. But uh, one of the key things we need to understand about life planning is it's very personal. Uh, it's about you. It's your life. Nobody else's life, it's yours. And of course, there's other people in your life, and you may run into some situations where you have to more or less put your life in the back seat for a moment to take care of loved ones or to do things that you need to do. But that's going to be a very short period of time because there's nobody you'll spend more time with in your life than you. And it's crucial that you focus on these things and get to the point where you need to go. We've heard this a lot. And if any of you have ever made goals in your life, you recognize that goals in your mind stay there. They don't go anywhere. You have to put it to paper. You have to write it down. Yes, with computers, yes, you could type them up. But I'm a firm believer in when you handwrite something, something magical happens. Uh, it, it actually transmits from your body into language onto a physical thing called a piece of paper. And when you do that, they tend to be more successful. Uh, there's a solid connection between those who set goals and those that accomplish great things in life. Now, the definition of great things is individual. Your life, you design it the way you want to be. The key thing here is in order for you to accomplish the things you want to do in life, you got to be clear in what you want. And many of us have no idea what we want. At the time of this, we're dealing with COVID-19. And right now, everyone is in a state of shock, quite frankly. Uh, some people are going through anxiety, depression, worry, uh, financial worry. It wasn't that long ago we had the economic recession of 2008, which a lot of people, including myself, went through a lot of challenging situations. And in my case, nearly lost everything. I didn't have a life plan then. If I did, then it's potentially possible that I would have avoided some of those things that happened in my life. But I didn't. Thankfully, I survived them, and I learned from them. So goals are crucial. And if you're having difficulty finding the type of goals you want, you got to go back and figure out what did you want to do when you grew up. And that's an exercise that for many of us uh, might be painful. And that's understandable. Some of us have past that we're not happy about. Uh, some, of us, some of us have had challenging situations and some have had great lives. Either way, you want to be, make sure that you get to the point of designing your goals in a way that you feel confident about. They should stretch you. Um, they should improve the things you're doing in life. Um, they should improve maybe some things you want to change. Maybe you have some habits you're not proud of and you want to get past them. Um, these are goals that you can come up. Uh, you can also design goals to obtain an outcome, whether it's getting a certificate in a course or learning to play a new musical instrument or graduating or learning a new skill to get a promotion at work. All of these things are important because when you do these things, you're growing and investing in yourself. And there's nothing wrong with investing time watching Netflix. There's nothing wrong with doing the things you want to do in life. But there's got to be a balance, a harmony of things that make your life the life you want to have. There's a quote from Napoleon Hill, and if anybody is familiar with him, uh, he wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. Highly recommend you read that book. 
might be a little clunky for some, but it's, it's a game changer for many of us. The quote is, you need to reduce your plan to writing. The moment you complete this, you will have a definitively given concrete form to the intangible desire. And what that means, similar to what I said before, put it to paper. Like a contract, for example, you engage into a contract with another party. When it's on paper, it, it's agreed upon. You sign it and away you go. If it's a verbal agreement, then there's some conflicting opinions of what actually was supposed to take place. You put it in writing, you can look at it and say, this is what I want to do. This is my life. This is what I want. You may have a question, how do I know what I want in my life? You may not be clear. When you go through this exercise, the key is to get clarity and you will. And this is why life planning and goal setting is such an important task. Because once you do these things, it sets a roadmap and clear instructions on how to get from where you are to what you want to do. Would you go on a trip to an area that you've never been without using a map? Now, some of the really bold individuals might. You might say, let's see where we find ourselves. Well, you could end up in a completely different direction if you're not following some guideposts along the way. And that's what this exercise does. It allows you to establish a roadmap for where you want to go. You can take detours. It's your life. You can change things up. You may find the, a particular path that you thought you wanted. You get there and you realize this is not what I wanted. In my case, my original career path was accounting. I worked in accounting for a long time, was really good at it, but then decided I didn't want to do it. So I changed. I decided to go somewhere else and do something differently. And I did. And after a while, I didn't want to do it anymore. So I changed. You can too. It's your life. You can do however you want to deal with it. It's, it's, it's your life. Don't forget that. Planning your life and establishing goals is healthy for you. It gives you motivation. It gives you a purpose. It gives you hope. And again, at the time of this, we're dealing with COVID-19 and a lot of people are really searching for hope. It's there. We have control. This morning, I went for a nature walk. I heard birds chirping. Squirrels were climbing around. I was amazed on how big the squirrels were because we're at the end of winter and usually they're not that full. The squirrel obviously did quite well this winter. That a squirrel had a plan. It had life goals. I say that tongue in cheek, but of course we all know that uh, sometimes animals can survive the winter better than others. When you're establishing goals and you're planning your life, you're going to define certain targets that are important to you. And again, these targets can change because as you're going down this path of planning out your life, you may discover, and once you get clarity, that in fact you want something just a little bit different than what you wanted before. That's fine. That's good. As I said before, it's your life. You get to design how you want your life to live. Of course, we know there's always going to be some pitfalls in life and there's going to be ups and downs and uh, there's going to be some mistakes. We all know about Thomas Edison and the light bulb and, and how many times it took him to get that perfected. Thankfully, he didn't give up on it after the 10th time because we'd all be uh, living by candlelight. Who knows what else we'd be dealing with if he didn't pursue what he wanted to do. He had a goal in mind. He had an outcome that he wanted to have in place. He took many, many steps to get there. But once he did, look what we have now. When you're working through some of these goals, and there'll be a worksheet uh, link uh, to something you can download, basically to start off with some light goals. Uh, you're going to find it really, really invigorating to the point of giving yourself some clarity because you may write down some life goals and after you write down everything else, you may look at it and go, you know what? I really don't want to do that. That was something that somebody said I should do, but I don't really want to do that particular thing on that goal sheet because it's not, not something desirable for you because if it's not something you're willing to put the time and effort into, the likelihood of you being able to do it is slim and none and slim left town. Now, there's a caveat here. Life planning can go sideways. And a lot of that is you don't follow through. I used the Edison example before. He followed through. That's why we have light. That's why we have all the other things we have that Edison created. He followed through. It's easy to give up. Believe me, I know that. I've given up on diets. I've given up on exercise. I've given up on relationships. I've given up on jobs. I've given up on endeavors, you name it, we all have. But the things that really mattered, the things that deep down I knew were really important for me to do and accomplish, 
I did. Was it easy? In many cases, no. Was it worth it? Absolutely. So you have to commit, and sometimes there's techniques and challenges for connecting, and and by connecting, I mean connecting with people to be accountability partners for you. And some things, you may have a life goal that you want to keep pretty private, and you don't want to share that with people. I get it. If that's something that you need to do, so be it. But you can at least have accountability partners to hold you accountable to accomplish that goal, even if it is private. Uh, you don't have to tell them everything. Just tell them you need somebody to remind you to stick to it. It takes time, too. You're going to realize that over time, these goals are not going to be something that are going to be easily accomplished in a day or two. If you've got things that you think you can do in a day or two, then go ahead and get them done. It'll build momentum and give you the confidence and the permission to realize that, yes, you too can get things done and you can make some improvements to your life uh, because you have a roadmap that you've designed to make sure that that happens. And we've all heard the joke, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? It's the same thing with designing your life and your goals. This is not a one-time shot. Your life hopefully will be long. You'll have a lot of opportunities to do things in your life and you need to come up with a plan of how you live your life. You wouldn't bake a cake or cook a meal if you didn't have a plan in place on what it was gonna be. You need to have the ingredients, the right temperature, the right mixture, and all of that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's going to look like a, an age three-year-old creation. Yes, lots of water or other adult beverages can help wash down that quote-unquote food. For those of us that have had kids, we've all ate that meal. It takes time. It takes time to master. It takes time to figure out the things you need to do. But ultimately... What you're going to want to do is line up some time, schedule it, just like I tell people, schedule free time and break time and relaxation time in your calendar. Schedule time to work on this. Be specific. It's an important meeting. It's an important meeting with you and your life. It's crucial for you to be able to do the things you want to do. Earlier, I mentioned about not writing your goals down. There's a couple of reasons why. If you don't write them down, if you don't have the best of memories, you're going to forget some things and you're going to go down the path of working on things and you're going to realize, crap, I forgot to do that. Write them down, put them somewhere you can see them. Uh, I am a big fan of journals and notebooks and you know, have one key notebook that you keep with you. You may be some secondary ones, but transfer those notes over to one master notebook. And then over time, you'll have a plethora of notebooks like I do. And it's fun to go back and look and see where you are in life. Because I have notebooks that are several years old that I go back and look at and I shake my head oftentimes and say, wow, how little did I know? Because in life you grow, you learn, you pick up new skills and traits and lessons, bumps and bruises along the way. But you know what? That shapes who you are. And it's important for you to set some goals that um, are important for you. I'm going to tell you though, you got to be careful on setting unrealistic goals. If you want to lose 500 pounds. Now that might be an exaggeration to some. For many, it may not. You want to set goals that are achievable. You want goals to be a stretch where you're going to have to put some time and effort into it, but you want them to be achievable because if you set a goal that you know is impossible to hit, then all you're setting yourself up for is failure and reducing the likelihood that you'll ever accomplish any of the goals that you truly want in life because all the ones you set before were not able to be achieved. With these goals, you need to set an action plan as well. And what I mean by that is set some deadlines. Your boss gives you assignments and they have due dates. So should your goals. So you just write down, okay, I want to lose weight. Great. When? 10 years from now? 50 years from now? 90 years from now? Next week? When? Be realistic with your dates, though, people, because you don't want to set dates that are impossible to hit. Working backwards is something that Steve Jobs often talked about. And what he did is, okay, we have a new product. Let's say the iPhone, for example. Okay, he wants an iPhone with all these features. They don't have those now. You know what you want. That's the end product. Now you have to work backwards and figure out the steps in order to get there. It's an easier way to go about it, I found, in my life is, what's the goal I want? Where am I at now? 
connect the dots and working backwards helps bring out any potential pitfalls. Again, there may be some twists and turns along the way. It may take you longer than you thought, but don't let that discourage you. Still put the time in. And when you have this plan, you know, you're going to refine it because this may be a new exercise for you. You may be wondering, hmm, how do I do this? How am I going to be able to get this done? At the end of the day, you will get it done. But you got to have a good plan. You have built-in action dates, accountability deadlines, and whatnot in order to make it successful. Again, with any new exercise, a new habit, the likelihood of you losing focus and motivation is going to happen. So you need to come up with some mechanisms ahead of time to figure out what am I going to do when I don't feel like sitting down with that goal planning exercise on Sunday mornings, if Sunday mornings are the time you set up for it. You need to check yourself and go, okay, what would I rather be doing than this goal planning exercise? Unless it's something really beneficial to you, then all you're doing is procrastinating. And believe me, I'm guilty as charged when it comes to things like that. In those situations, if there's five things on your goal sheet, work on one of them. Let's say you were going to work on all five of them to plan it out for the week. Work on one. Just get one thing done. It's like cleaning your house. You're like, okay, I got to clean my house. It's too much to do. Okay, clean one countertop in your living room. You know, you maybe have end tables, just something like that. Clean one of them and then stop. In all likelihood, you're going to feel ridiculous because you're like, wait a minute, I just did one. I could probably do another one. And you do another one. And then finally, what you realize is you just cleaned your living room because you got the motivation. You got the energy to be able to do things. And it's, it's, it's easy to fall trapped to not wanting to do that. Start off small, build up the momentum. You will find that you will be more successful in life when you actually get to do this. With goal planning and life planning, following through is such an important thing. You got to stick to it. If you want to dramatically impact your life, you have to put the time and effort into it. We have been conditioned as a society to order a number three with a Coke and a speaker, drive around the corner, pay for it, and get handed a brown bag, and away we go. That's not how life is. That's not how nutrition is. I'm not banging on you to not eat that kind of stuff. I would say don't eat it all the time. That's not how life is. You got to put some time and effort and momentum into things. And when you do, you're going to get clarity on what you want in life. And you're also going to get clarity on the things you don't want in life. And that's an exercise that this does as well, is it brings clarity to where you want your life to go. And it will also bring clarity on the things that are no longer serving you in life. It's all about the boundaries, people. The summary of this section is you need to get a vision for your life. What do you want your life to look like? Now, in the next couple of years, the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, go all the way out to the end. And sometimes that can be a scary proposition. If you are one that's not comfortable with the end of your own life, which you know many people aren't, that could be a difficult exercise. You can design your life. You say, okay, if I had the ideal life, the best life I could ever live, what does that look like? What's going on with that? Write it down. And then write down where you are now connect the dots. Knowing what you want is crucial. If you don't know what you want, planning for what you don't know what you want is going to be a difficult exercise for you. So kind of work through figuring out what you want in life. Your future goals, of course, are going to be dictating on how you want your life to look and you want those to be achievable and attainable uh, without uh, burning yourself out. I've seen too many people go through exercises and they go gangbusters and they all, they launch that business. They're really successful and they're too tired to enjoy it because they burn themselves out building it. And that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. An action plan and following through things, and which can be modified, but keep moving forward. Even if it's half a step a day, you're moving forward. You're half a step ahead of everybody else that's sitting on the couch right now. And an important thing to figure out through this is reviewing it, uh, adapting to things that you didn't see pop up, and adjusting as necessary. So I look forward to hearing from you. You know, Send a message to support at artificeleadership.com on some things that you learned from this exercise, and we'll see you in the next section.